So today I'm going to talk on the topic about a topic that was very frustrating for me for a few hours while I was working on the project. Uh, this is related to a HTTP status code 400 that gets thrown during validation of anti-4G token. Yes, uh, it's pretty straightforward to for implementation of uh, anti-4G token validation in ASP.NET Core. But when things really go south, then it can become frustrating. So what happened is that I was implementing a document upload functionality, uh, as you can see. Uh, and when I tried to upload the file, uh, my call always kept failing with error code 400. So I tried to debug it for a few hours. It never dawned on me that my problem may be li lying in the anti-4G token validation. So how did I debug that the issue really is with my NP4G token? So here is what I did. So this is the controller where I have the method, which is upload calibration report document. As you can see, it has a validate NP4G token. But the way I debug, first I had to narrow it down that this error really is coming from the NP4G token. So first thing, let's. Uh, let's show you what this error could look like. So what I'm, so let's let's go back to the phone, and there's one more change I had to do. Let's see first that when it works correct, how does it look like? Uh, let's see. So as you can see, the call dropped right into the correct method with all the correct settings. Now, this is all well and good, but I have not shown you when the problem really happened. The problem was. So first you need to understand how NT4G token works because once you understand how NT4G token works, then it becomes easier for you to understand uh, how to debug it. So as you can see, I have added some code at the top uh, because the NT4G token implementation uh, is inside ASP.NET Core framework. So what I did is I went into the source code to understand what exactly is going on. So you can see that when you add validate anti-4g token attribute on top of your method uh, what it's going to do is framework is going to do is it is going to uh, validate your request for validation of the request it does three things it's looking for three pieces of information it's looking for a cookie which uh, you can you can name the cookie whatever you want to name it as you can see i called it dot angr dot uh, it gets the cookie. Other place where it looks for that information is in the header. It looks for a header called request verification token. Or, and the last place it will look for is the form itself is called underscore underscore request verification token. So let's look at the .NET Core implementation. So this is the source code of ASP.NET Core. Uh, this, this validation starts from the method which says validate my request. So let's see default anti forgery token validate tokens. So this is the method that gets called during the pipeline of your request. Um, ASP.NET Core looks at all the filter filters that have been applied uh, in the pipeline. When it gets to the anti forgery token, it calls the validate request async. So let's see what it does. It first is trying to validate your SSL configuration. Basically, what it, this means is that it is looking that is your cookies uh, SSL settings are correct. Uh, the next thing it wants to do is it wants to get grab the three pieces of information that you have stored in the request. So it calls get request token in the cookie store. Let's see what that looks like. Get request tokens async. Let's match it. Get request token async. So what it does? First, obviously, uh, it's a search on the DB context because it wants to make sure that you have the right uh, context. Then it looks for the cookie. Once, then it drops down into finding. Now, let's see. What's going to do is uh, that it's going to look go into look into the header name. Uh, sometimes you can actually null out the header name, and then the header name will not be used. But I will not 
uh, advice that you uh, set this header name to nothing. Uh, so, read this comment. It says, we want to delay reading the phone as much as possible. For example, in case of large file uploads, request tokens could be part of the header. This is a very important piece of the information. Uh, the reason being is that when the method, before executing even the method, uh, you want to validate if this request is valid. If you don't have this information in the header, now what your pipeline has to do is to get to the form, it is going to have to read the whole stream. Now, if you pay attention to this comment, what it really means is that if you have a really large file that is being read, to get to the form, now your pipeline will have to read the whole form. Just for the sake of validating your method, you don't want to read the whole file. If it is a small file, that's okay, but if it's a large file, um, then reading the whole form could take a while, and that means just the validation is taking a long time. So always set the header, uh, especially during the asynchronous AJAX call. That was, that is in my case uh, later on. I will show. Then it goes into the header, looks for the token. As you can see, if the request token cannot be found, even in the request then it goes into the form and it returns back into the validation and with the validation first thing it is checking is did I find a cookie token if there is no cookie token it is going to throw an exception and if it cannot find the request token then it is go into then it's just doing its due diligence telling you what kind of exception it is if it is not then it validates the token and moves on so these exceptions that are being thrown when the tokens are missing, they result into a HTTP status code 400. That is what we will see in a little bit. So this is what this thing is all about, that how this validation of your tokens work. Let's go back to our application code. I'm going to make a small change here. I'm going to, um, let's see. So, in my case, what happened when things were not working was this was the problem. This piece of the code, if you look, what it's doing is just a cookie helper that I implemented in TypeScript. It is trying to find a cookie name. Accidentally, I just, instead of putting the right variable, uh, I just kind of had an undeclared variable or name instead of a cookie name. What it ended up was that once I had it, it actually resulted. So let's see the impact of this. Let's compile the code. Let's go and compile it. And now we have the wrong code here. Now let's try. Nothing happened in the past. We saw that it won't jump into the network. Let's see the dev tools. There we go. Now you see the call 400 has come into play. That means that the validation is not working because the cookie was not, because my headers were not set correctly. Uh, where did we set the headers? Let's look at the code that is responsible for it. Here it is. Uh, this is the code which is responsible for uploading the file. And as part of that request, it was supposed to set the correct headers. Let's look at the method which is setting the header. And this is the header. And as you can see, this is setting the request verification token header. And this is the code that was responsible for setting the value. What happened is that when get cookie method is called, it could not find this cookie in there because the code was wrong and it's ended up setting it sending an undefined value to the server so how are we going to fix it we're going to change it to the name and now this will work and that is, let's see if it really works so that is going to be a little test so let's check the dev tool sources excellent 
got the right code. There we go. Now the verification is working. So now you saw that how. So the way I debugged was I added the three lines of code to see what part of the token was missing or was wrong that was responsible for throwing 400 error code. Once you find what is wrong, then you can go and fix the source. That will save you a lot of trouble, a lot of time in debugging this. 400 status code that is being turned by the anti validate anti forgery token. Once this is working, then everything will be happy and you will be on your way. So, I hope this helped you if you run into this kind of problem. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. I'll be more than happy to help you with debugging these kind of errors because I love it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. See ya later. Bye-bye.